An American conservative usually conceptualizes modern day politics as this conflict between individualism and collectivism. Conservative commentators and pundits have described their side as, you know, the side of free market economics and social liberalism. We don't care what you do, you know, as long as you don't harm others in doing it. On the other hand, there's the leftists. They're often described as these power-hungry communists who just want to control how you lead your life and impose government control on the economy. But as conservatives, those who desire to conserve this country, we must ask ourselves, are we really placing ourselves in a winning position as hardline individualists? Or is there a third option that's much better than the false dichotomy just presented? Individualism, at its core, is the idea that all individuals have the right to live as they please and nobody can impose a lifestyle on others. Usually a good way of ascertaining if an ideology is in alignment with conservative principles is to look to our founding fathers for guidance. After all, we want to conserve America, which is why we need to know what America was meant to resemble in the first place. What we find when we examine America in 1776 will shock many individualist conservatives. The Founding Fathers had made it clear that America was meant to be a Christian nation. John Adams pointed out that the Constitution was made only for a moral and religious people. The laws of the time reflected that same Christian spirit. Anti-sodomy laws, anti-obscenity laws, restrictions on immigration, decency laws, and limitations on voting are just some of the examples of the pieces of legislation which restricted individual behavior that did not cause direct harm to others because the Founding Fathers realized that morality extends beyond the non-aggression principle. They didn't imagine a fragmented society where anyone could gratify their selfish desires. They recognized the obligations that men have to society and the need for a stable social order. Our founding fathers put the will of God over the will of the individual. The infiltration of American conservatism by individualism largely took place after the Second World War. Thinkers such as Milton Friedman, in order to forestall the rise of communism in the West, made the focus of conservatism the promotion of free markets. While liberals and cultural Marxists were eradicating the social fabric of America by removing Christianity from the public square and declaring that all cultures were created equal under the doctrine of multiculturalism, American conservatives were focusing on deregulating the economy for incremental rises in GDP. And over nearly a course of 70 years, a political consensus had formed. Mass migration was supported by conservatives because it led for cheaper labor. Feminism was advanced by the same free market economics that the GOP praises as female employment started to rise and make male employment start to fall, all for lower wages. The sexual revolution was largely ignored by conservatives because we didn't want to seem like prudes, you know, these homophobic tyrants, by simply condemning sinful behavior. And this caused all forms of degeneracy to fester in our society. And the results of this conservative obsession with individualism are horrifying. It's nearly impossible to raise a family in America. In 1970, there was around 38 million unmarried Americans, accounting for about 28% of people, 18 and older. By 2019, the number increased to about 222 million, amounting to 48.2%. In 2002, only about 7% of U.S. households consisted of married couples with children in which only the husband worked. Consequently, the American fertility rate has now been below replacement level for quite some time, standing at about 1.7 births per woman. Meanwhile, the rates of identification as LGBT have doubled every generation since the 1940s, standing at about 20.8% for the current generation of Americans. More frighteningly, though, 47% of Americans between the ages of 18 and 29 years old believe that the LGBT movement has not gone far enough as compared to only 31% who believe it's gone too far. Almost one-third of blacks, Hispanics, and Asians believe that the declining share of white people in America is good for society. Alarmingly, half of all Americans think that a lot more needs to be done in order to ensure racial equity, and half of those people want to upend the American institutions in order to achieve their goal. America has become a society that has rejected God discouraged family creation, and demolished the love of nation. If God, family, and country is supposed to be the conservative motto, then we have failed extensively in standing up for it. 
The real answer to politics isn't either individualism or collectivism. It is organic unity. Oftentimes we get locked into this false dichotomy of individualism versus collectivism. We think it's like, like this tug of war between individual and collective. And even if there's some overlap or compromise between the two, that's just like the rope not yet crossing either of the lines during the struggle. This is not the case. To reiterate, I don't like collectivism. I like unity. There's a difference. We used to have unity. Now we have collectivism. And unity is not what leads to collectivism. In fact, unity is the only thing that can resist collectivism. Under the shared creed of Christianity, by a people who have a shared heritage and a stake in preserving the traditions of this nation, conservatism is the recognition of obligations to things greater than oneself. As a society, we have to make an urgent choice. Do we look after our selfish pursuits? Or do we serve God, family, and country?